Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Episodes 21 and 22. Okay, we're finally getting into the start of the Dark Chibi Moon arc, as I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are now into the first chapter of Volume 5, following along with the manga. And I like that we're starting to get some dissension in the bad guy group of like, ah, I never really liked this in the first place. Well, at least I have these powers, and then we also get some, oh, so the moon power up because of her older self. Yay! <laughs> well, we have had the four of them, well, a couple of the four. Diamond never questions, but Ruby has expressed doubts, and Sapphire has expressed doubts, and it's even more clear now that it's the two of them and Obsessed Diamond. And we've almost won, so now we have time to express doubts because we're winning. <laughs> so what were your thoughts on these episodes? Enjoyed. As I think I said last time, I think episode 21 would have been a better ending spot, you know, for a two-week cliffhanger to see Chibi Moon giving herself over to Wise Men because she's feeling so lost and dejected she thought Pluto was only her friend. Apparently someone needs the Discord multi-friend lesson. <laughs> but one thing I've always disliked about this arc is how can she be 900 years old and still be that much of a stupid brat? <laughs> because apparently it's cute and it needs to be moy. But this means that by the time she assumes the throne, she'll only have like 50 years of life left. Because she's already 900. The approximate lifespan of a silver millennial is a thousand years. Neo Queen Serenity had the princess, I believe, at age 22, so she's about 922, so in 70 or so years, theoretically, she would pass, and Small Lady would have to become the queen, and that's just a tiny amount of years. Sorry, that has always bugged me in this series. Plot problems, ho! Yeah, that and the Electra Complex. <laughs> And if I remember correctly from stuff I've heard once again, it gets, uh, worse now. <laughs> of course it does, because now she has the body of an adult, and she's just put Tuxedo Mask under her power that she got from Wise Man, so of course it can't be good. Poor Tuxedo Mask, he finally gets the ability to fight back, and then he's kidnapped by his future daughter. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you go into a space-time storm without a key. I do like how things are picking up now, or transitioning into a new arc of things. I like how the Sailor Scouts are rescued because Sailor Moon finally gets power and she um, is able to do things. <laughs> Look, I'm being articulate. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah, it's kind of nice that we get future Serenity, but isn't there like a problem with that? Like maybe their energies or are they going to talk about their physical bodies being close to each other being a problem? The problem was the physical bodies, which still doesn't explain why Tuxedo Mask and Venus are okay. I complained last time about Venus because all the bodies were laid out in the same room. So unless the room that they've been using to do all the tracking and the library that they went to are further away than the room they were first in when Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon started having trouble, they should still be having trouble. Either that or they've just admitted that Tuxedo Mask and Venus's bodies have both died. Ah, I don't know. Time travel. <laughs> Always an iffy subject. Once again, the animation looks nice. There's probably some errors in there that my brain glossed over because I was like, pretty! <laughs> yeah, very shiny. Except that one close-up of Diamond's face when he was talking, it was the same thing with Ruby a few episodes ago. Like, the mouth just looks weird to me, and it looks even weirder because this is a close-up. <laughs> They'll probably fix it on the Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. Gimme already. <laughs> uh, well, at least we have the classic to keep us entertained. <laughs> and other shows. Mm -hmm. And YouTube. Yeah. I can get lost on YouTube, and it's not even funny. <laughs> it's very easy. Because it doesn't feel like you're making a real commitment. Oh, I'll just watch one or two videos three days later. <laughs> God dang it! Procrastination. Thy name is YouTube. Ah, <laughs> uh, but back to Sailor Moon. Yes. I like how since Diamond allowed her run of the castle, she made use of it to try and find her friends. And we got that nice scene of her eavesdropping on Sapphire and Ruby before collapsing and being picked up by Diamond proving that he was just following her around, 
creeper. <laughs> of course, he's a stalker. Yeah, very heavy-handed stalker. Uh, heavy-handed as in, I have you now? <laughs> no, very heavy-handed as in, I'm going to destroy your entire planet so I can take you. Ah, other than the whole destroying the whole planet thing, I think that's pretty normal for stalkers. Being obsessed kind of does that to you. Yeah, and Sapphire has to blame Sailor Moon for this because he can't blame his brother, even though his brother's the one being an impulsive idiot. Mm-hmm. Like, now if I could only get rid of you. I'm going to have my droids get rid of you. And suddenly this isn't working and you've got an amazing power up right here in the heart of darkness and you summoned your friends and you escaped. Damn it, that totally backfired. Ah, oh, but they'll have to come back. Don't you hear how creepily excited Wise Man is? God, that voice actor gives me the creeps. <laughs> the higher his voice goes, the worse things are going to get. Yeah, especially when he now has Chibi Moon on his side, apparently. Apparently. I thought it was pretty clear when she took his hand and then we have a shadowy form that looks just like the form out of Sailor Moon's Nightmare. So, what are the differences so far between these episodes and the manga? Uh, this seemed to stay closer. One thing I did see was the two energy-looking droids that Sapphire used to grab Sailor Moon. They were actually given names in the manga. Hmm. I mean, not that it's important, they're not around very long. Nope. And I want to say that the shadowy figure of Black Lady was a little bit more well-defined in the manga. But chapter 21 was pretty much spot on. Hmm, that's good to know. Going back to that thing you pointed out where Chibi Moon was like, Oh, I've lost all my friends now. I was like, no, you haven't. <laughs> I was kind of thinking that during that scene. I was like, um, she's, yeah, she's not, be she's not very wise for being 900 years old. Do you think she would have gotten more experience by now? I guess they really sheltered her because she didn't, you know, grow. Well, if she was that sheltered, she shouldn't have been able to run into those bullies. That's a good point. I think it's mainly that she just needs to be especially naive or innocent for certain plot points. And the fact that she's 900 years old only plays into the point of she's a late bloomer and her powers will awaken. Because except for that one moment, the entire rest of the series she is treated as a child. The entire rest of the series she's treated like a little kid even though she's 900, including after this and she becomes like normal Chibi Moon again? She still pretty much acts the same as Usagi, so she still pretty much acts like a kid, even when the series focuses on her with Helios. Mm. There was lots of things to like in the episodes. I like the fact that everything's picking up, and once again I was like, oh god, we're gonna get to that creepy love triangle thing, it's gonna get worse. Uh, couldn't they have changed that in this adaptation? Really? No, because for the most part they're staying very true to the manga, and this is part of the manga. I like, once again, how it's Sailor Moon's voice who wakes up the other Sega Scouts. Well, she is the connecting force between all of them, both in terms of power and friendship. And I'm still wondering, like, when are we going to get the costume change? Because Sailor Moon has gotten uh, several power-ups, and there's really not much difference in the way she looks, other than now she can talk with Queen Serenity's voice, apparently. And I was getting kind of confused in that, too. It's like, okay, when is Queen Serenity talking and when is Sailor Moon talking? Because there was one point where it was clear uh, when Serenity was talking, but then we kind of get to this point where I'm like, I think Serenity is talking, or is it Sailor Moon? Because the voices sound very similar now. It didn't really seem unclear to me. It was more that at some points it was only the Queen speaking, and at other points it was both of them in perfect sync. At least that's how I interpreted it. Hmm. This? Are they both talking? Is it just one of them? Because there was a lot of points where the characters were reacting in a way like, okay. <laughs> At the point where it sounds more formal, it was more just the queen by herself. When it got closer to Sailor Moon's speech pattern, it was more the two of them together. Hmm. And even though he's not her father yet, he still seems pretty devoted, considering he ran off without going, I'm gonna have one of those keys, yeah, be right back. <laughs> Yeah, and at that moment, you know, Pluto should have been completely capable of stopping him long enough to hand him a key. Or at least chasing after him and shoving one in his hand, because, you know, he and Endymion's hologram is right there to guard the door. So take two seconds to go hand the guy a key. But plot convenience. I think that's my main problem with this section of the arc. There's so many things that occur that seem to be specifically for plot convenience. Mm-hmm. So, shall we wrap things up? Mm -hmm. Overall, I like these episodes. 
they were fun, and I like how it's picking up to a new arc, which I kind of knew about, because I kind of know about things in the future Sailing Moon arcs, but not in detail, so this is kind of a opportunity for me to experience this stuff firsthand in a new and more beautiful format. <laughs> <laughs> and overall, I like both of them, and I can't wait to see more. Well, it shouldn't be too long before we get another episode. Overall, I didn't super enjoy these, because to me this part is kind of a little bit of a lull in the arc, because we're still having more exposition on Pharaoh and the origins of the rebels. But the plot progression that we get is significant in the corruption of Chibi Moon and the escape of Sailor Moon and her comrades. And this has been our thoughts on Silly Moon Crystal, episodes 21 and 22. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a friendly comment below and consider subscribing to our channel. Like Lux's art and would like to see more of it? You can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what's going on with this channel? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Oof. <laughs> Episode numbers, please. <laughs> 21 and 22. Thank you. Well, bad time to play with that toy. <laughs> <laughs>